In this video, I'll be going over a method to simplify learning and implementing GTO strategies. One of the most common ways people learn poker is through pattern recognition. For example, when we see a flop with all high cards, we understand through experience that the preflop aggressor has an advantage on this board and should generally be doing a lot of c-betting. However, since there are almost an infinite number of different situations that exist in poker, Finding spots where all of the exact same variables repeat themselves is highly unlikely, which makes pattern recognition difficult. So to address this problem, we can take a page from the world of artificial intelligence by using a technique known as bucketing. Bucketing is used by AI to group together hands of similar strength, thereby reducing the number of variables that need to be contended with and simplifying the game. For example, on this King 7-3 two-tone board, Ace King of Diamonds and Ace King of Hearts are strategically identical as they have the exact same showdown strength and neither has a backdoor flush draw, so attempting to individually reason about each of these combos separately doesn't add any value. In reality, most players likely bucket hands without even realizing it. Right When playing in real time, most players primarily think in terms of how their category of hands should be playing instead of how their specific combo should be playing. For example, instead of thinking about how ace, king of spades should be playing on this board, most players will think about how their top pairs or top pairs with strong kicker should be played. However, unlike computers which can easily implement using thousands of buckets, humans can manage far less, which creates a dilemma since there's a trade-off between simplifying strategy by utilizing fewer buckets and maximizing EV. So in practice, the goal for each player as he progresses in his experience and learning should be to make his analysis more and more sophisticated and granular by gradually increasing the number of buckets he uses, which in turn will increase the EV of his plays. So let's take a look at an example to see how bucketing works in practice. In this hand, the low jack opened in the 6 max cash game and the small blind called. The flop is king, 10, 7, rainbow, and the small blind needs to decide whether he should bet or check. In this case, most experienced players would likely quickly check on this board without much thought. In reality, what these players are doing is that they're actually bucketing 100% of their hands together to be played the same way because they recognize the fact that they're out of position and at a significant range disadvantage. And we can confirm that this highly abstracted simplified strategy is optimal by checking the range EV regret value, which tells us how much the small blind would lose in expectation against the GTO opponent if it chose to check 100% of its hands in its range, which in this case is zero. However, when we get to the low jacks decision, we see that the strategy is much more mixed and complex. How should a relative novice construct his c-betting strategy here when memorizing all of these different frequencies is not possible? Well, we can greatly simplify our strategy through the use of bucketing, but we want to do it in a rational and not in an arbitrary way by focusing on the most important concept in all of poker, EV. For example, let's start by creating a bucket for our strongest hands. First, when we bucket together all of our sets, we see that the EV regret for betting a number of different sizings is relatively low. This means that if we decide to bet full pot with 100% of our sets in this spot, the maximum amount of EV we would lose compared to the GTO solution is 0.9% of the pot, or about 4 one hundredths of one big blind. Or, if we chose to bet quarter pot with 100% of our sets, the maximum amount of EV we'd lose is 0 big blinds. But instead of trying to develop a unique strategy for our sets and for each of the other hand classes in our range, which would still be quite complex, what if we wanted to simplify things further? Well, let's try to add our two pairs to this bucket. Now we see that if we bet quarter pot with 100% of our sets and two pair combos, the maximum amount of EV we'd lose is 0.2% of the pot or less than 1 one hundredths of a big blind. Now let's add in over pairs and the EV regret for betting all of these combos quarter pot remains the same. But what happens when we add in top pairs? Well now we see that the EV regret for all actions has jumped significantly to over 5%, so in this case we've probably simplified the strategy too far, and our initial bucket of strongest hands should probably just consist of sets, two pairs, and over pairs, all of which we'll just bet quarter pot. But we can't stop here because we need to construct a strategy for the remainder of our range. 
So let's reset the filters and create a bucket for our next tier of hands, starting with top pair. And we'll keep adding classes until we reach the point where further bucketing results in a significant EV loss, which in this case is at the weakest pairs. So we see that when we create a bucket consisting of top pairs, under pairs, second pairs, and third pairs, and simply decide to check all of the combos within this bucket, we only lose 0.9% of the pot compared to the GTO solution, which makes intuitive sense since one of the primary incentives for middle strength hands is to realize without growing a huge pot. And finally, let's bucket the weakest hands in our range together, and we see that betting quarter pot with all of these combos results in zero EV loss, which also makes sense as these hands have limited showdown value and therefore should benefit significantly by getting the opponent to fold. So instead of trying to reconstruct our entire range combo by combo, we see that through the use of bucketing, we're able to greatly simplify our strategy by creating three wide classes that can be played in the same way without significant EV loss. Now some of you GTO wizards that are watching at this point are likely thinking to yourself that actually this type of simplified strategy is exploitable and doesn't maximize EV since it's overly polarized and affords poor coverage on various runouts, and you would be right. But everyone needs to start somewhere, and we don't want the perfect to be the enemy of the good. Additionally, once a novice player is able to build a solid foundational understanding of equity distributions by using just a handful of buckets in this way, he can then advance towards expanding the number of buckets he uses in an incremental manner. So for example, if we wanted to add a bit more refinement to our strategy and check some strong hands to protect the middle part of our range, we can start by deciding to check some of our sets that are blocking the greatest proportion of our opponent's calling range, in this case, pocket tens. And we see that although checking all of our sets would lead to a major EV loss, if we decided to only check some of our tens, the EV loss is relatively small. We could also try to add a bit more complexity into our strategy by betting some of our top pairs. Right, we could decide to bet with some or all of our top pairs with the strongest kickers, which we see results in low EV regret, and then decide to check all of our top pairs with weaker kickers that have a high EV regret for betting, but a low EV regret for checking. We can also mix some of our middling hands into our betting range by choosing to bet some of these combos with a backdoor flush draw, which only results in 0.1% of EV regret, and then just check all of these combos without a backdoor flush draw, which generally prefer not to bet. Additionally, we can differentiate between pocket pairs and non-pocket pairs. Right when we click on our middling pairs, we see that pocket 8s and 9s are mostly checking, whereas 7x, although weaker in rank, is actually playing much more aggressively, likely because non-pocket pairs have more outs to improve on turns and rivers. By using a bit of a merge strategy in this way and adding some mid-strength hands into our betting range, we gain a bit of EV through protection and also by having better coverage on various runouts. And finally, instead of simply betting all of our unmade hands, we could refine our strategy a bit by mixing them across the board. Right, we see that the EV regrets for betting small and checking are relatively insignificant, so we could, for example, use a blanket 30% check, 70% bet mix with all of our unmade hands, which, although would not be replicating GTO perfectly, which is impossible, it would ensure that we have sufficient draws and bluffs throughout different branches of our game tree. So as we can see, bucketing is an essential tool which can be used to simplify and tame the impossible complexities of GTO strategies. And this type of bucketing system is scalable since the number of buckets each player chooses can be modulated according to each player's experience level. So that is the video for today. Thanks for watching and until next time, stay balanced.